Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Oxford Stormland D2D jacket and trousers. This is Oxford's attempt to push their clothing range up market a little bit, and I think they've done a very good job of it. The Stormland jacket and trousers combination has a waterproof membrane laminated to a tough outer shell, and its specification is quite a bit higher than the price would suggest. As we record this, the price is £400 for the jacket and it's £300 for the matching trousers. Now, I know that's not cheap, but I think you get a lot more with this kit than you would usually expect if you spend this sort of money. So let's run through it. The outer shell, it's mostly made from nylon with tougher ripstop fabric in key impact areas like the shoulders and down the arms. It's the same for the trousers, which have that ripstop material at the seat and also at the knees. This construction is enough for both to meet the middle level in the latest CE standard for protection, which is AA. And as I said, both the jacket and the trousers meet that AA standard. Oxford's dry to dry membrane is bonded to the back of the shell where it can get into the fight against rain sooner than if it sits loosely inside the jacket, as it would in a more basic construction. Its rain defense is a rated 10,000 millimeters static head, which is a decent level of protection. I mostly wore this combination in dry weather, but there was one very wet ride home from work that lasted about an hour, and this suit repelled it perfectly. One of the big benefits of a suit with a laminated membrane is how it doesn't soak up as much water as a jacket that's got a drop liner inside. It wasn't quite a case of just shaking the water off the jacket at the end of a wet ride. A top spec Gore-Tex laminate jacket would shed water more effectively in my experience, but this wasn't far behind and the suit wasn't exactly dripping wet. After a night of hanging on the back of a chair in my dining room, it was bone dry and ready to go again in the morning. Another performance benefit of a laminated suit is the way the vents allow air to flow directly to the body without having a waterproof membrane stood in the way. The Stormland suit has large vents at the chest, the arms, on the back, and they all work well on the jacket, allowing in cooling air. The chest vents are easy to use. They undo the zip, you pull away a Velcro closure, and then there's a magnet that lets you hold that flat back to open up the airflow. You don't get quite such comprehensive vents on the trousers, but there are vents on the front and the back of the thighs, and they worked well at keeping me cool. I rode on some very hot days in this suit and I never experienced any discomfort through overheating. I even had a day out riding green lanes and dirt roads where I was much more active on the bike than I would be on a normal road ride and again this suit kept me at a very comfortable temperature. The jacket fastens up the middle with a zip that's protected against rain by what's effectively a triple storm flap. If rain gets past this outer flap then there's a gutted storm flap behind there and if the water should get past that and then get between the teeth of the zip, there's also another flap behind the zip. That really is a serious combination at keeping out rain. There's nothing particularly fancy about the collar, but it works well enough for me. It fastens with Velcro. There's a neoprene flex panel to avoid that choky feeling you can get from a stiff collar. And there's also a hook back to keep that collar open and let some air in. For serious rain, you also get a waterproof storm collar supplied with the jacket which you can zip on at the collar just up here. If you put your lid over the top of that, then it helps stop water getting in through the neck of the jacket. The rain I encountered didn't warrant a storm collar, which is a good job really, as I forgot there was one. The cuffs on this jacket are excellent as well. Well, I think they're excellent. Some impatient people will think they're overly complicated, but the twin cuff design that this jacket uses is the best type of design I've ever experienced for rain protection. To use them properly, you fold the outer cuff back and then you put your glove over this snug fitting inner cuff before then putting the outer cuff over the top of your glove and zipping it shut. If you want a tighter seal, there's also a Velcro flap around the back to pull it in some more. Now, if rain rolls down your sleeve, it goes onto the glove rather than into it. And if your gloves get soaked, the water can't wick up the surface of the glove and make your inner clothes wet as that inner cuff means the two don't meet. It does perhaps take very slightly longer to do it up, but I find I'm much better protected against rain than I am with a more basic cuff. The trousers fasten with a YKK snap closure here. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it's very secure and it does seem also very robust in its construction. There are also braces on the trousers, which are probably more useful if you don't want to use the zip to connect them to the jacket and you can also remove those braces. Fit adjustment on the jacket comes from belts at the waist and above the elbows. There are poppers on the forearms and then an elasticated drawstring around the bottom hem. The trousers have belts at the calves and also at the waist. The waist belts are set to their widest position in standard trim. 
if you're on the cusp of two sizes, then I'd suggest going for the bigger size and then using those belts to pull the trousers tighter. That gives you a bit of expansion room so you can fit thermals underneath in winter or in case you just develop an insatiable appetite for pies. Last things last on the outside of the suit, pockets. There are two at the waist and if you unzip the sides, then you've got somewhere to tuck your hands when you're not riding. There are two pockets at the lower back as well. The main pocket has a fold over closure that fastens with Velcro and then there's a mesh pocket in front of that. Oxford say all the exterior pockets have been designed to be waterproof, except for the mesh one at the back, which is probably pretty obvious anyway. In my hour of wet riding, the contents of the pockets, exterior pockets, all stayed completely dry. On the trousers, there are two small pockets at the hips and then also larger ones there at the thigh. I found these pockets more useful really as things can sit flatter on a thigh than they can at the waist where you're flexing to sit on the bike. So, seeing as we're talking pockets on the outside, we'll start with those on the inside of the jacket as well. There's a Napoleon pocket behind the main zip of the jacket. You have to undo the zip to get to it, which is a bit slower than having the pocket between the zip and the storm flap, but that's not really a big issue. That pocket was sizable enough for my phone and my small wallet, which is quite handy really, as the other interior pockets aren't very secure. There's one in the main shell and then a duplicate of that in the thermal liner. That thermal liner, it's removable and in my opinion it's a cut above the normal thermal liner found in jackets. There are sections of a material called Polatec Power Grid on each side of that liner which is both warm and stretchy so it allows a closer fit. There's a fold-out panel as well on the front of the thermal liner which protects against any draft that might somehow get through the three storm flaps surrounding the main zip on the jacket. I wore this jacket in conditions down to 12 degrees Celsius with the thermal liner fitted and just a t-shirt underneath and I was perfectly comfortable at that temperature. Behind the thermal liner in the jacket is the mesh liner and that's what holds the armour. There's shoulder and elbow armour included which meets the higher level 2 within the CE standard for impact protection. It's type A so it doesn't cover as much of your body as a type B armour insert would but I would say really type A armour like this is much more common at the moment. There's no back protector as standard, but Oxford's inserts aren't an expensive addition. A basic level one protector is 22 pounds and a superior level two insert is 30 pounds as we record this. So while we're on the inside and we're talking protection, let's just show you the label for the jacket's overall CE protection rating, which is double A as I said earlier, and it's the same for the trousers. The trousers also have the removable thermal liner, also with the Polartec thermal grid stretch sections, and the trousers come with both hip and knee armor. The knee armour is level 2, like the jacket, it's soft and it's squishy. The hip armour though is very different, it's a solid lump that's not very flexible at all. I thought that was going to be uncomfortable and I expected to replace it with something more supple. But once I got used to it, the armour was fine. It makes it a bit trickier to put the trousers on, but it's no big deal really. I never once had an issue with the armour while riding my bike, and that included a long day of riding out to Norfolk, spending the day on dirt roads, and then riding home again afterwards. So I know this whole combination is comfortable for a long day's riding. What I can also say is that the trouser legs will open up very wide if you need them to. I even managed to get them over the top of a pair of Thor motocross boots, which I really didn't expect to be possible. And the trousers still fitted very neatly over my sporty Dane Easy boots without leaving loads of excess material flapping around. The jacket and the trousers connect through the full length zip and I found it easy to connect them using that as well. Okay, so I hope you're getting a sense that I've been very happy with this Stormland setup. It's been comfortable in conditions from around 12 degrees up to the mid-20s. It's kept me dry in some horrible rain, it's been comfortable throughout, and it's also very flexible. Jackets with laminated membranes are often stiffer than other jackets, but I've hardly noticed that at all with this suit. Oxford's designers really should give themselves a pat on the back for the Stormland, as it does a great job and offers a lot of value. Ride Magazine's testers agree, they gave this a recommended tag when they did a recent textile suit test and after 600 miles of riding in this suit I can see exactly why they did that. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Oxford Stormland D2D jacket and trousers but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.